shark or shark a shark vacuum just the red and white model that you can get from any Walmart Target um, most anywhere you can pick one of these up I love my shark but if it is not clean sufficiently it will not do a good job like any other vacuum so today we're kind of gonna go through and um, clean up my vacuum okay so I'm gonna move you guys and then we'll get started all right so the first thing you need to do is absolutely make sure it's unplugged before you do any of this stuff yeah don't need any accidents out there <laughs> now my vacuum is dirty and disgusting it needs to be cleaned out <clears throat> it's something that uh, I use every single day which means I won't get to use it for about three days because you have to let all the canisters the filters everything dry thoroughly or your vacuum will get a musty kind of smell to it if you don't so the first thing we're gonna do is take off the brush um, area and this is just a shark um, complete seal technology all that it's a rotator it's a professional it's, it's called a professional right there there's my phone let me pause you just for a second okay we're back um, so you also need to make sure that the this is emptied so and I've already emptied mine so we will set it aside Here's a tool that, look how messy that is. Yes, I know. You guys are going to get disgusted and think, why is she showing me this? But I bet a lot of you have a vacuum that's sitting there that you use on a daily basis that is getting like this. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to clean it. Well, it's not quick. It takes, you know, a little while. But you don't have to do all the scrubbing. Yeah. So we put that one aside, get all of our cord out of the way. Ooh. You also want to get all these icky things out. This is very important to your vacuum. You know, this is your filter. So you want to get this out of there also. Ugh. This one too. This is another filter. Uh, this I've been using a lot around cobwebs, things like that. This needs to be cleaned as well. Ah, uh, yeah, this can use some scrubbing, but we're not going to scrub it. Now the hose, I do not clean the hose. Water can collect in there that will not dry well, so, uh-huh, yeah. The best bet you have for this is if you have one of those, um, kind of like a Swiffer kind of thing. You can buy a Swiffer duster that's on a telescopic um, thing. You can just go in and out of the hose and get all of the collected dust from in there. It kind of helps a little bit. I don't have one. I broke my extended pole. so. I'm not going to be able to do this part. Okay. And then look right here. You've got instructions as you go. Squeeze tabs to remove hose. So you squeeze your tabs. This is um, like if you got to suck up a sock. See, look how nasty that is. We can definitely take it outside and shake it really good. That'll help get a lot of this out. But 
to remove that hose is important because what if you sucked up one of your kids' socks and it got stuck there? Yeah. Okay, the next thing is to remove this part, the brush part right here with the rolls and all that. And if you look right here under the red button, I don't know if you guys can read that, you probably can't, but if you own a vacuum like this, you know, you'll be able to see it. It's release nozzle for HEPA access access. That is what is supposed to be giving you good air quality while you're vacuuming. See, it just removes. And right here is that part of it. Now, usually vacuums with beater bars, they will come to where you can, I can't lift with this hand, so we'll have to prop it on my knee, to where you can remove this part and be able to take off that brush and clean it. This one though, you can do it, but it is a real pain to get put back together. So I choose not to do it. <laughs> but do you see all the dirt and icky? I'm going to have to get that all detailed out. This, though, you cannot get wet. I mean, you can dampen a Q-tip and get in those crevices and stuff, but you cannot submerge this part. So I'm going to um, get you set up with the next part. I'll see you in just a second. One other thing, one other thing that I forgot to show you, we took the motor off of the brushes right here at the bottom of the rotator is a screw. You unscrew that and you have this filter. This is something too that needs to be cleaned on a pretty regular basis. This is what they call the HEPA filter. I don't know why. I guess it's supposed to make the air cleaner. <laughs> So, I'm going to pause you again, and we'll get started on uh, cleaning this thing out. It's nasty. Okay, everybody, we are in my bathroom. I have put all of my um, vacuum parts into my bathtub, and we're going to use my shower head to spray them out. And then we're going to soak them you know, for a couple of hours to get all that um, dirt and grime out of all the nooks and crannies and stuff. Okay? All right, everybody. I rinsed it all out. You can rinse out the, the hoses. You can rinse out the HEPA filters. You can rinse off the um, foam filters that we took out. I just put it in my bathtub, and I just used laundry soap to make all the suds. Do you see how dirty the water already is? Yeah, yeah. This is going to be nice for my vacuum. It really, really needs a good soaking. Um, here in about an hour, I'll come in here with a um, toothbrush and I will help scrub out all the nooks and crannies. So now let's go work on the beater bar, you know, that brushy thing and get that all cleaned out, okay? All right, let's go. Okay, everybody, we're going to start cleaning up the um, beater bar. This part right here where all that hair gets caught up in it. I am going to put you down here on the floor, and hopefully you can kind of see what I'm going to be doing. So, as soon as you get out of that flicker, there we go, that might help. Okay, where'd it go? That's not it. Let me find it. Where'd it go? I'm looking for my seam ripper. Oh, right here. What you need is just an ordinary seam ripper. You can get this anywhere from Walmart, anywhere that has sewing supplies. And I got this one for a dollar at Walmart. This, I have discovered, is the safest way to clean this out show you. You just do right along the bar, just like so. 
just like that. I know it's nasty, but this is important to the maintenance of your vacuum. Vacuums aren't cheap. You need to take care of them. You need to clean them. And uh, it's almost like investing in a microwave. You know, you, you want to keep your microwave clean. You don't want to have to run out and buy a $200 microwave every time you turn around because you haven't cleaned it. So, it is to me as important as kitchen appliances especially if you're like me and you have dogs that you you know you got to vacuum up after a lot of this is hair human hair and it looks like it's the color of my hair <laughs> uh, so this is probably a lot of it from when I had long hair because I used my uh, vacuum to vacuum all the rooms. Okay, so we got we got most of it. Yeah, and I'm hoping that you guys have gotten your vacuum cleaner out, especially if you own a shark and you're cleaning your vacuum with me. You know, we can do it together. So, I am going to pause you and finish the brush up. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I got most of the hair out. There's still a, a you know, strand here and there, but not a big deal. Um, next, we're going to concentrate on this. This little holes and stuff right here. What I use to clean those up, I just use a letter opener. Um, I don't use a butcher knife or anything, you know, a, a, um, a, what do you call it, a steak knife or anything because that, look at all that hair I got, eek, that will just um, be dangerous. You could cut yourself. And what I do is I just wrap it along the tip of the letter opener Kind of give it a little spritz, you know, with some, I'm using Brillo cleaner right now. You can use any cleaner, or you can use vinegar and water. You can use anything you want. This is just the first thing I grabbed. You can also take a toothbrush and brush it out of there if you want to. So, yeah, look at all that gunky. Look at that. And I'll be washing my letter and opener when I'm all done. But look how we, look at that. Oh boy. That is really nasty. Nasty, nasty. Here, let's give you a close-up of that. Look at that. Gross. Whoops. Sorry, guys. That is gross. Ugh. I should have done this a long time ago. Ugh. Okay, we're going to put you back. Ugh. And you're not going to be able to get it all. I promise you that. If you get it all, wow, you've got a lot of time on your hands. But you want to be get the majority of it. Because like I said, this is a, a major purchase, you know, your vacuum. So you want to keep it as clean as you possibly can. See, look at all of that. Look at all that that I'm digging out. Just look. So I invite you to go get your vacuum and start doing this. I am going to finish up this bottom part. And I will be right back to show you when I get all done. Okay? All right. Hang tight. Okay, everybody, I am done. Now, it's not perfect. You know, there is still some crevices in there and stuff that, you know, still has some grime and dirt in it, but it is a vacuum. We do have to remember that. So, at least it did get this clean. 
So now we're going to work on this part of it. I have yet to figure out how to clean this screen right in here. You could probably do it, you know, if you took all of this off and, you know, did it und undid all the screws and stuff. But that's a very complicated process that I don't want to have to do unless my, the belt for my beater bar broke. Then I would, of course, have to do that. And I see a big chunk of gunk I could clean up. There we go. Um, but for right now, we're not going to worry about that screen. But see, like in here, we've got some dirt. We've got some grime, stuff like that. So I am just going to give this part of it a good spritz. And start wiping. All right. I'll be back, everybody. Okay, everybody, here it is. All nice and shiny. Look at that shine. And look in there. Uh, it's still a little grimy, but I think it'll be okay. Can't really do a whole lot about it in there. But isn't it so much better? And another thing, don't forget to pop this part down and get right along this crease here. Which I probably could have got that better. But right along this crease and along this hose right in here, it collects a lot of dust and grime. So we've got this part clean. All right. Now for the big one. This is where the motor is. Very important, do not get this wet. But you can use a dry cloth along with a letter opener like I showed you on the other part just to kind of get the creases and things like that. Okay? And then when you knock it loose, like after we knock knock off some of it, what we'll do is we'll tip it upside down and knock all the stuff that you knocked loose right out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this first. Now this right here is just the cover. You can get it wet. Not sopping wet, but you can spray it down. And just wipe her down. Give her a good wipe. You know, you just want to get all that dust and grime off. Because a vacuum is here to clean for us. And if it's not clean, it can't do its job well. So I got that part of it clean. I think I'll go ahead and wipe this out. Now this part of it here, you don't really want to get it soaking wet either. But we got some buildup right there, so I'll just do right there. There we go. So, got that front part done. Now I'm going to just kind of lightly give this a wipe in here. After I get the inside of this all, you know, loose and dusted and stuff, then I'm going to do the handle part, front and back, including all of this up here. You can use your spray on these things. So, I'm going to pause it. I'll get that done, and I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, everybody, I got the top part clean. Now, it's not perfect or anything like that. I'm going to sit you back down so you can get a good look at it. Ah, I hit my finger. Ah, right there, right where it got hurt. Oh, my. Okay, it's not perfect or anything like that, but... It is a lot better than it was. Go ahead and kind of give it a tap in case we've got any loose dirt here in the motor. Um, yeah, and you're going to, it's not going to be perfect. It is a vacuum. But you have to remember, you invest good money in your vacuums. Take care of them. 
if you don't take care of them, they're not going to do the job efficiently. So that's one thing that just irritates me to death. You see all these people cleaning their houses, but you never see them take care of the vacuum, but they've got immaculately clean vacuums. How do you think they do that? They clean their vacuums, just like I'm doing now. So we got that part clean. Uh, we got that part clean. We've got our canisters and everything soaking. So I'm going to pause you, go check on the canisters, and I'll be back. Okay, everybody, the lighting changed. I think I was able to get rid of that flicker. We'll see. Looks very orangey, I know, but I'd rather do this than have you guys have that flicker that's just bugging our eyes. Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick tip on how to clean this out because you don't want this to get wet. You take your washcloth like this. Oh, let me do this side first. And you just feed it through. You gotta have it out. Just feed it through. Just like this. Keep going. Keep going. the hose of your vacuum right there mm -hmm. this rag is not going to get washed and reused I'm going straight in the trash but look it already looks cleaner than it was so make sure do a test run with your broom handle your mop handle whatever to make sure it will complete completely go through your hose because if it won't you're going to lose that washcloth and have to get out the coat hanger. Yeah. So, I'll be back. Okay, we're back in the bathroom where my um, vacuum parts are soaking. Oh, you see all that? I'm turning you upside down. See all that? Yeah. So, sit you right here. And yeah, you're sitting on my toilet. Sorry. But I cleaned my toilet today, okay? <laughs> So, see how much wider this is already? Yeah, it just needs a good soak. I can't squeeze with that hand. You gotta remember that. So, this right here is probably good enough. Yeah. And we can get this right here. See how much better that is? Now, mine is hairy. Well, it's not hairy, hairy, but you can see, like, here's the hair. Yeah, because I have dogs. Yeah, but it's so much cleaner than what it was. Remember what it looked like before? Ugh, it was nasty. And look at this. Look at the insides. Yes, yes. See it? it this one, I think, is done. Yeah. So, I'm going to get out a toothbrush, clean all the crevices of my main canister, and I'm going to spare you guys from seeing all that because you guys know how to use a toothbrush to get in nooks and crannies. So, I'll be back with that. Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you what the tub looks like. It's terrible. I'm going to have to clean my bathtub now. Who knew? that cleaning the vacuum would lean, lead to a clean bathtub. Take a look at that. Yeah. That was how dirty my vacuum was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, this is 
how I dry my vacuum. I just lay towels on the floor and just kind of stand it all up like this on towels, just like that. But for the HEPA filter, it's right here on top of my vent because it takes forever to dry this one out. And I got my sponges right here on the side too. But this will take days. So I will come in here every so often and turn, flip it over to get it some air. So that's how I do that. So everybody, I am going to get off of here and I'll be back mm, in a day or two and show you how we put it all back together again. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to pause you, take you to the utility room, show you what my floor looks like cleaning this vacuum. Here's the floor, everybody. Yeah. Look at that mess that I got out of the vacuum. So now I gotta sweep and mop in here, too. Ugh. Gross. Gross. Big old hairball. Yuck. Yuck. Okay. I'll see you in a day or two after this vacuum is dry. Grandma, this vacuum is so clean. Well, thank you, Bryson. This was all stained. Hi everybody, we're back. We are going to put together our Shark Upright Vacuum. Uh, it's been 48 hours since all my components have been washed and cleaned, uh, all dried out. You're going to get some flickering because my white balance is not wanting to work on my camera today. It's a very cloudy day. So, but try to overcome it. Now I'm showing you this put together part in case any of you, this is your first time taking apart your shark. Um, it can be, you know, complicated if you've never done it before. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get, you know, our motor part. We put this right here. It's kind of just fits in there. Along this red thing, you'll have these little spikes right here. Well, if you look down in this hole, it has grooves that that spike will fit into. You've got to get them in that groove so that you have a tight fit right along the seam. Then you have your little clip. And I have to do this with the other hand. That you will secure it and it doesn't want to work there we go now you may think okay that right there is in the seams it'll pop right out but it doesn't it's backwards from what you think you would think turning that dial to the solid part would lock it in but not on this machine <laughs> i know i know it's crazy then the next thing we want to do oh i'm reaching is we want to connect it to the beater part of it. Now, you'll see right here, you've got, these right here are the electrical parts that will make this motor run. And, let's see, right in here, as you see those little ones there, you will just, and you have a button in the back that will lock. This button right here will lock it in place and see it's not going anywhere. The first of our sponge filters, and you can buy these but you to replace them, but you have to buy them online. Walmart doesn't carry them. Now another store may carry them, but I haven't I don't really have anything else around here. But I've owned this vacuum for two years, and these are still in really, really good condition. So, it is built to last. You put the thin one in first, and then the cushiony one, the thicker one, on top of that. And you'll just put them down in there, see? Oh, one moment, my phone is ringing. Okay, I'm back. It was just the drugstore telling me my prescription was ready. <laughs> so we've gotten our sponges in. Uh, the next thing we want to do, oh, I'm reaching again, is get this little filter here. And 
this is it. You will pop this top part out. And see that little hole right in there? Just put it in there. And you want to make sure it's in there good and solid so that you have a good closure on this. Because if that little round filter is not put in there all the way, you can't get a good closure. You risk the chance of hurting your clip or whatever. That's all there is. You just... Okay. I'm not used to doing it on the ground. You just clip your canister back into place because if you use your vacuum, you know you got to take this off from the button at the top and then release your dirt. Okay. Now to connect our hoses. I'm going to try to turn it like this here for you. This hose, we will make sure, goes on the top. Oh, boy, that flicker is bad. I am so sorry about that. Oh, this one will go in the bottom. Let's see if I can get you guys a little bit more tilted. There we go. So, we want to, I've got this backwards. Make sure your cord right here is out of the way. And you just follow the instructions. Like, on here, on the top here, it'll tell you hose. Let me see. It'll tell you hose here on this. This will tell you where your hand tools all go. So this one, this part of it's kind of self-explanatory. Other than the fact that you've got to maneuver it to get this hooked back in where it belongs. Anti-tip hose, squeeze tube to remove, oh. You're doing this all wrong. I'm telling you guys all wrong. Scratch that part of it. Ugh. And I'm getting more dirt out of my hose. You take this part of it. And you see this right here, where it says squeeze tabs to remove hose. Ah, the hose got my, didn't get all that dirt out of there. But that's okay, it's much cleaner than it was. Your tabs go back into their little position, which is a little bit hard to get in there, but that's what you do. You make sure that the tabs right here have clicked into their little grooves. You put this part of it back into here. Because if this, this hose is out of this, it causes tippage on your vacuum while you're using your hand tools. Then you just follow this all the way up. Now, with this shark, it will not suck good if it doesn't have this hose connected to this. Because it like closes off the air right here. Then you just put your accessories right where they belong, just like so. Ah, like that. I am not liking this lighting. It's really irritating me. Uh, I know it's probably very irritating to all of you. Uh, but it didn't start up until I was already in the middle of all this. <laughs> so I apologize, extremely apologize for this. My, I need a new uh, computer. Um... A lot of you may have the trouble that I have had before, where my hose just constantly gets kinked and everything. It doesn't look the most attractive, you know, or anything like that. But instead of using the hook that they give you to wrap your cord around, I just make big loops with my cord, just like this. And I will hang it on the top 
hook. I don't even use the bottom hook for the cord storage. That way it doesn't get all kinked up and everything. So, let me move you up here. That is the clean vacuum. There she is. Much, much cleaner. And that, my dear friends, is the cleaning of my shark vacuum. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a very long video, very, uh, you know, crazy video. <laughs> and the flicker. Oh my gosh. I, oh, I'll get that figured out. I will. I promise. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and please forgive me for the, the, um, the quality of it. Okay. My lighting has been bad this weekend. So I will talk to you guys later. Try to have a good day and get your vacuum cleaned so it can do a good job for you. I'll talk to you later. Bye.